Hi, this is Amber with From Farm to Yarn, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about core spinning. So what is core spinning? Core spinning is the concept of having a core on the inside of your yarn. So as you're, as you're twisting your yarn onto your spinning wheel, you have a core strand of yarn that you are putting your roving onto and twisting it onto. So the reason you would want to do core spinning is uh, because you can get a lot of texture and dimension from doing core spinning. So anytime I'm making an art yarn, I pretty much am, am using a core spinning method in order to do that. So um, if you've never done core spinning before, a few things to know. I have my jumbo flyer on top of my Lendrum wheel, and if you don't have a huge orifice, if you, if you just have a regular spinning wheel, you may be limited on the size of the art yarn you can make based on how large your opening is. Um, I would say that this one's probably a good inch and a half, so it's not bad. And then of course there's wheels that are made for art yarns and they have huge orifices and you can fit a bunch of stuff in there. Um, but I do have the jumbo wheel on here. And I have my leader coming down, and then what I'm going to do is attach, um, meaning that I'm going to tie on a different yarn to this leader that's going to go through the entire strand of the yarn that I'm spinning onto it. So what should you use as your core yarn? Um, I think when you're starting out, the best thing to do is just find some acrylic yarn or something cheap that you have a bunch of extra on that you don't mind using because it's going to be covered and you won't be able to see it. And just get some of that yarn as your base one to get started with so that you get a chance to experience this and do the core spinning without wasting something that's really nice. A lot of people that core spin like to use um, a very thin, fine yarn, but something that has a lot of grab to it. And so mohair is something that a lot of people tend to use but mohair is not cheap, so you probably don't want to use that right off the bat when you're just starting to spin because um, you might waste a lot of money on this mohair core that uh, is not going to be the best core spun art yarn that you're going to enjoy. So I tend to use, um, I just have a lot of this right now. This is alpaca. It looks like mohair. You can see here, it's really thin, it's really fine. You can see how it kind of halos and it has all these little strands of fiber around the yarn. And that's actually great because it helps grab on the roving that you're going to add on top of the core. So this makes for a great core um, and I use this all the time. And because it gets covered, it doesn't even matter what color it is. Um, and I have a ton of it. I mean, this huge ball is gonna last me quite a while. But mohair is a great thing to use. But if you don't have any of those, just grab some cheap extra acrylic yarn that you have just to get started and give it a try. You don't have to just use a thin item like mohair or alpaca. You can use a lot of other things as your core. You can use elastic and you can make fun elastic yarn like this. You can use metal. And when you use metal, you end up with this really pliable, fun, crazy yarn that can make shapes and do all sorts of fun things. So it ends up being your core spun yarn on metal. So you can do that as your core. But today we will just be using the alpaca that I mentioned. So if I had this on a spool, I could just set this on my Lazy Susan or my Lazy Cape and just place this on the ground. Um, but because I have a big ball, I'm just going to place that in a little bucket beside me so that it doesn't roll away on me. And then I'll just take one end of it and tie it onto my leader, like I mentioned. So there you go, that's my core. And this is what I'll spin onto. So when I start spinning, I'm actually going to use this, this is Surrey Alpaca Merino Mix. Um, this is some of my roving. Actually, the whole set that I'm showing you today, I have listed right now on Etsy. I don't know if it will be by the time you see this video, but I have a few of these sets on Etsy right now. So I'm going to get started. And because I usually go back and ply my art yarns, I'm going to go ahead and just typically go in my clockwise direction like I normally would on a single. And then when I come back to ply this yarn, 
then I'll go counterclockwise um, like I normally do on any of my yarns. So I'll get started. And what I'm actually going to do, I might have to adjust my tension. There we go. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm pretty loosely holding my core yarn. My core yarn's not going to be spinning. It's just kind of gliding through and moving up onto the bobbin. So your core should not be spinning at all. What is spinning, what, what's wrapping, is the roving that you have in your other hand. So I'm right-handed. I just find it's easier to hold the roving with my right hand and then kind of um, hold my core with my left and guide it on with my index finger. You might find a different way that you like or that works better for you, but that's what I find works for me. So as I'm drafting this out, I'm deciding how thick I want that yarn to come onto the core. So I intentionally just did this big spot right there. So what I did is just allowed more of the fiber to wrap around here. I guided it with my finger, and so now I have a thicker spot on the art yarn. And that's pretty much as simply as you can make thick and thin art yarn. So intentional thick and thin art yarn, right? We've all had plenty of uh, yarns that become thick and thin that are not intentional. So you can also just make this pretty thin where you're barely covering the yarn that you have for the core. Um, you just decide what you want to do. So this is a close-up of attaching that Surrey alpaca and merino blend fiber. So I'm just drafting with my right hand and pulling the fiber out and controlling how much fiber goes onto the core based on how much I'm allowing to come off from the draft. And I also guide some of it with my index finger on my left hand as well. When you've done as much as you want of one color or set, then you can take whatever else you're putting onto your yarn. And in this case, um, I have some superwash merino right here that is hand painted and it has some, I think it's probably Stellina or Firestar or something on here. And um, I'm just going to keep spinning and adding this on here too. When adding in pieces with color, you really have a lot of options on how you want that color to display, depending on how you twist the roving as it's going on and how much you allow to go onto the core. So you can change the direction of what's on the front and change the appearance of what actually goes onto your yarn, which is kind of a fun thing to do. And again, changing the thickness by just holding it in place a little bit longer with a little bit more fiber. Or going back over the same spot for a while before you continue on to the next section. Okay, so just adding that. I want to stop and show you the next thing. So you can see I'm having it fully cover the core. You can decide how much you want it to cover on the core or not. It's really your yarn and your decision. When you want to start adding fun features, like mohair locks, this is how you do that. So I have a mohair lock right here. I actually can probably divide that into smaller locks. And there's a few ways I can do this. I can grab the tip or the butt end, whichever I want, and allow the whole thing to spin up onto my yarn. So I'm just holding and letting it all wrap onto there. And now I just kind of have this chunky spot where that mohair lock exists. The other thing I can do is just allow the butt of the mohair, the cut end, to attach 
and there we go. So now I have it attached on there, but I have the tip of it still sitting out. And you can do that as little or as much as you want. So I have the tip of it sitting out, and now I can attach more robing on either end to kind of secure it. And now I have this yarn with my little mohair tip sticking out. So this is really starting to add a lot of dimension and character and texture to the yarn. For the mohair locks, you can do this one of two ways. You can allow it to attach onto the core and you can just allow the whole thing to wrap and just be this large spot where you have this shiny mohair sticking out. Or you can just try to attach it by the cut end. This maybe wasn't the best piece because I had already ripped it. I pulled that apart so this, this was not the best piece to do a for a lock. <laughs> you can let those locks kind of poke out and stick out too. Let's get a cleaner piece so you can watch that again. So here's my lock end. Actually, here's my lock end right there. So right here, we're going to take the cut end Attach that onto the core, hold it in place till it captures, and then you can kind of let it go. And so now you have this mohair lock that's sitting here and dangling from here. And if you're going to add more roving, this is a good time to just kind of help lock it into place. Throw a little bit of that wool on there, and it'll just help secure the mohair lock. But you'll still have your nice tip hanging there. Next thing is adding sparkle. So Angelina, Firestar, um, you know, cut nylon pieces. You could do this a few ways. You could blend it in with your wool or whatever you're putting on top before you even go to spin it. Or you can just blend it straight onto the yarn as you're core spinning it. And that's what it'll look like. You may not be able to see the full dimension, but on the close-up you should be able to. The next thing is adding sparkle. So this obviously has some sparkle in the hand dyed wool that I'm using on here, but if you want to add a little bit more sparkle, you could do that in your blend. So like this wool had it in there, or you could add more before you blend, or you could just spin it on as you're going along. So I just hold it into place, and I just kind of let that shiny Angelina line up on there, and then you have a little bit of flare. So you can see the sparkle, you can see this nice sparkly spot, and some of it kind of sticks out. And that's how you can add a little bit of flare. And the last thing to show you is ribbon. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is attaching ribbons. You can do these a few ways. Um, you could, this is a silk ribbon, so I can hold it on one end and take some of my roving to help secure that. So I'll spin that in place and just try to get, just capture that silk ribbon with the roving right there. So I just guided my roving right onto the spot where the silk ribbon is attached. The ribbon is now attached. I could leave it pulled out and then start my roving below that so that I have this long strand right here. I could allow the ribbon to actually kind of wind around and then attach a little bit more roving on the back end. So now I just have this ribbon that's kind of tied on there and you can have that be as thick or as um, tight as you want that to be. The other thing I could do, let me just pull my roving off right there, is tie it in place so put a little knot so that it ties. And 
and then continue spinning your roving on from here. I think I'll just put a little bit of my roving on top of that knot to hold it in place. And then I'll just spin from there. And then I have ribbon tied on to my yarn. Ribbon can happen a few ways. This is a silk ribbon. You can hold it on one end, take some of your fiber, and help secure the silk ribbon. Oops. My hands are not wanting to function now. <laughs> They're getting tired of teaching. Okay. So I'm just kind of holding my roving in place. There we go. And I've attached my ribbon, and it actually is not all spun on there. And it can hang down as low as I want it to go, or I can allow it to spin onto the fiber. And that's another way I can attach it. But I feel like you don't really see that there's a ribbon there if you do that. So I'm going to rip it out of there right real quick. The other thing you can do is tie it on. And I like tying it, although I probably won't leave it this long. I'll probably cut it into a smaller piece. I can cut it afterwards too. And I'll probably trim this about right here. I like to just tie it straight onto the yarn as I'm working through. And now I'll continue with my roving on top and set that ribbon in there in place. Sometimes with core spinning, something gets in your way for a while, but then you can just kind of fluff it out and pull it out of, out of the way once you know that you've covered your core again and you're set and you have something set in place. So there you go. So there's a ribbon added onto there. So those are the, some of the fun ways that you can core spin and what you can add onto your core. Um, I have a video on how to core spin and add on what I call unicorn horns, so these big bulky pieces of the roving that go on here and then wrapping around that. You can also attach feathers when you're core spinning, so that's another fun thing that you can do. And in general, it's a great way to do something when you want to add some dimension and character to your yarn, and, um, or you want to have the yarn really thick in some places and thin in other places. Um, core spinning seems to be a good option for you. So hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks.